coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. I don't know about you, friends, but it is almost too good to be true news to hear that I can buy without money and without price. And it's not stealing. It's not illegal. It is the agenda of God. I want to know all about it. And he says, come. April 4, 1998, we began. Confined to time and place, on television, the box as we knew it then. Now there has been an evolution, a revolution. What really is television today? Today the limits are off. The word transcends time and place. Values woven in the enduring fabric of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, handed freely from one generation to the next. The word is rushing, undiluted, in all forms of media to your fingertips, online and on air, every day, any day, all day. Take yours. Connect now, whichever way you want. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel, Fresh Dew TV, for daily content. Watch Fresh Dew on Facebook, Instagram Live, Periscope by Twitter. Listen on Mixlr, Spotify, and Audio Rema daily, and much more. Visit our websites for a growing list of times to watch and listen. So join me on Fresh Dew with Pastor Nki Chiene, always bringing fresh inspiration and direction to you right where you are in a simple, sincere, and supernatural way. This is Television Today. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Ngechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Tea. Fresh Tea is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Tea, we begin a brand new message series titled Another Economic System. The Lord actually gave me this series in 2004 and we're going to find out that it is very, very relevant to the happenings in our world today. Another economic system. Our text is Isaiah 55, and it's a very long text, so you'll bear with me as we read through the entire text. From verse 1, it begins, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation who you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways 
higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, somebody said, amen, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come of the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come of the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Now I'm going to give some definitions. Economy. We're talking about another economic system. Economy is defined as the state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. Economy is also defined as the administration of the material sources of an individual, community, or country, the state of those resources. An economic is defined as pertaining, per, pertaining to or having reference to economy or to economics, capable of yielding a profit. So this is like I said, titled Another Economic System. And, you know, I didn't study economics in school. I ran away from it. But I, I, I spend money. So every single one of us, in one way or the other, is involved in economics. And right now, with the global pandemic, you know, going on in the world at the time of the teaching of this message, there is an economic chaos. There is an economic crisis. There is a situation where the global economy is really in a mess. In fact, I use the word chaos, and that word chaos, if you're to define it, is simply defined as, listen, complete disorder and confusion. So the economies of the world are in complete disorder and confusion. Chaos means the property of a complex system whose behavior is so unpredictable as to appear random, owing to great sensitivity to small changes in conditions. When there are small changes in conditions in countries, you see the economy of the country begins to respond immediately. But think about a situation where what we're dealing with now is not a small change, and is in literally every condition. In fact, there is no country in, there is no, no, no economy, rather, in any country on every continent, I'll say that again, there is no economy in any country on every single continent that has escaped this economic chaos. So this is a time for us to understand this message. None has escaped the predictions of doom and gloom. Whatever country you come from, whatever country your families are in, every single country is facing these predictions of doom and gloom. Desperate measures are now being taken. And the countries that call themselves superpowers are doing things like, you know, granting bailout funds and writing checks to their citizens and stuff like that. All of that is awesome, but it is still borrowed money. It is still money that is still driving the countries deeper into debt. So there is, child of God, an economic chaos in the world today. Now, the good news is this. As children of God, we can decide to partake of this economic chaos or not. You say, how can I decide? That's why we're learning this. We can decide to say, oh, I'll be excused from this recession, thank you. I'll be excused from this economic chaos, thank you. Myself and my finances and my household, we decide to be excused from this economic chaos, hallelujah. We refuse to be influenced and guided and structured by this economic chaos. Well, to do that, you need to fill the vacuum. If you say, I'm going to excuse myself, from this economic system, while well, nature abhors a, a vacuum, you need to fill that space 
with another economic system. Glory be to God. So there needs to be another economic system superior. Again, only a dummy would leave an economic system for something less, you know, something that is not as good, something inferior. So if you are saying, I'm checking out from this global economic chaos, I do not want to partake of the economic mess going on right now, then you need to have a superior alternative. Because if the alternative you have is not superior, then you might as well stay with what you know. But I'm here to tell you that this system we're learning about now in this message series is a superior system. And the good thing about this system is that before man was ever even created, there was a creator. Before man was ever even created, there was a creator. Let's look at this in John 1. And from verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And remember that, and the Word was God. And you see why that's important. Now, John 8, 56, look at what Jesus himself said while he walked on this earth as a man. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Like 50 was a benchmark age or something. <laughs> then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. So it's important to begin to note this, that before man was even created, there was a creator, there was a God who set up, and that's what we're going to see very, in the very next step, this another economic system. And if you're anything like a, a Greek um, scholar, or at least if you've watched Fresh Dew for a while, I don't, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I like to pop in a few Greek words here and there because they help your understanding. We should know the word another in the Greek. And the another in the Greek, we found out from calling the Holy Spirit another comforter, is alos. He's alos parakletos, another comforter. What is it about alos? Alos is another of the same kind. Well, there's another Greek word for uh, another, another Greek word for another, and that's the word heteros, and that's another of a different kind. Well, the good news is this: this another economic system if we were to describe it in the Greek, would not be an alos economic system. It is a heteros economic system. It is an economic system that is not of the same kind as the one we're used to. It is another economic system that is not of the same kind and cannot get into chaos like the one we're presently experiencing. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you a heteros economic system a different economic system, another of a different kind. And I'll tell you this, child of God, when something you're used to has totally failed you, then it's time to look for an alternative. If it has failed you beyond hope, it's failed you consistently, it is time to look for an alternative. And if the economic system you have been, you know, striving along and working hard to, to meet up with has failed you, then don't you think you want to find out about another economic system? And in such a situation, finding out about another economic system is no longer, it's not a luxury, it's actually a necessity. A luxury is something you can do without. A necessity is something you cannot do without. And I really can tell you this in all sincerity and you know, with soberness, that with the economic mess, if you're a child of God, you're a believer, with the economic mess going on in the world today and we can project the global economy, what it's going to be like, you definitely have the necessity. You need to know about the alternative. You need to know about this heteros economic system that is another of a different kind. So the first part of this you know, message series, apart from the introduction we've just done, 
is what I've called part A, and that is getting to know about the system. Now, for the next couple of episodes, we're going to get to know about the system. And the first thing you want to get to know about the system is that God set it up, period. It is God who set it up. It is not the World Bank. It is not IMF. It is not CBN or whatever the banking authority is called in your country. It is God that set it up. It is not an intelligent man. It is not a finance minister. It is God that set it up. See, our pastor, how do you know that? Well, go back to verse 1. Who do you think is talking there? It's the prophet. And he's not talking under the inspiration of Satan. He's talking under the inspiration of God. He is a prophet of God. So we can say it's God's mouthpiece. And if it is God's mouthpiece announcing this economic system we're about to discover in Isaiah 55, we're safe to say it was God announcing it. It was God bringing out this. So it is God that set up this economic system. You know, there are just some things that only God can do. There are just some things that only God has a copyright on. A good example is in the issue of marriage, one of my favorite topics. In the institution of marriage, only God, only God can take a man who's, for example, 35 years old, take a young woman who's lived maybe 28 or 29 years old. They've lived in different parts of, maybe even the same city. They never met themselves. Different families, different backgrounds, different environments. Only God will pick him out of his father's house, pick her out of her family, bring them together. They, they're not supposed to know themselves sexually according to God's plan. And then they have a ceremony. Then he tells them, now you're one flesh. And he takes them and takes them into a room, plunks them on the bed and tells them, go ahead. You know, you're now one flesh until death do you part. Only God will have the kind of faith that such an arrangement will work. I mean, everything in the natural looks crazy. How do you pick me from 30-something years of my life and pick me from 20-something out of the environment I'm used to, out of the comfort zone I know? You don't know what I like. Even if we've been friends, you've never lived in the same house with me. And then we we'll come, we're supposed to become intimate and create a brand new family, and I'm stuck with you to death do us part. Only God could have created marriage. That's why any you know, alteration to marriage is ungodly. Something else you need to know is if God didn't get involved in your marriage, that marriage is going to have some tough times. You want to get God involved. Why am I veering off into marriage? It's a perfect example of something that only God can set up, only God can arrange. Well, this economic system, only God could have done this. By the time we look into it, you'll find that only God has the copyright on this other economic system. Only God, listen, can set up a system that promises you that you can buy without money and without price. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have no money. Come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Who does that? Only God can set up a system that is inviting you to buy without wine, sorry, without money and without price. In fact, the very meaning of the word buy completely contradicts this. Buy means to obtain in exchange for payment. The very meaning of it suggests that you must have money or you must have a recognized means of payment before you can buy something, a check, a card, some coins, something. You don't just say, without money, without price, I've come to buy this. And he says, come, come and do that. It suggests to purchase for money. Yet God is declaring boldly through his prophet that there is an economic system whereby you can buy without money. You know, when you hear buy without money, what readily comes to mind is the idea of stealing. If somebody says, says to you, you can take this thing without money, you think of stealing. Well, I'll give you three reasons why it's not stealing. First of all, God is not going to introduce a system that has stealing in it. Because John 10.10 10 tells us very clearly that God's agenda diametrically opposite to that of Satan. 
And Satan's agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So life is in this system, not stealing. So this cannot be talking about stealing. Another reason why I can't be talking about stealing is stealing doesn't tell you to buy. Stealing tells you to take. Stealing means to take something that doesn't belong to you without money and without price. But you're not buying it. But the word the prophet is using is buy. He doesn't use take. So it means it's not stealing. Third reason why it's not stealing, he's not hiding it. He shouts, ho, ho, everyone. If it was a secret deal, those kind of dark deals that you used to do before you got born again, all those secret corner deals, he wouldn't be shouting, ho. If it was illegal, he wouldn't stand right there on the street and yell, ho, everyone, all of you passing by. And I'm here to tell you something. You can buy without money and without price. The prophet is saying it boldly. He's saying it out there because it's something that God sent him to do. In fact, when you hear the word ho, from a study of several commentaries, it is an interjection that has several uses. And in this use, we see it here, bringing hope and heralding good news. So the prophet is shouting about good news that is too good to be true. I don't know about you, friends, but it is almost too good to be true news to hear that I can buy without money and without price. And it's not stealing. It's not illegal. It is the agenda of God. I want to know all about it. And he says, come. Just in verse 1, we see come three times. That is an urgent invitation, friends. And that is the same invitation I bring to you today. An urgent invitation for you to come with me on this journey and discover this heterous economic system. Discover this economic system set up by God, one that is of a different kind from the failed global economic system that the countries of the world are experiencing today. This, my friends, is an economic system that totally de-emphasizes and bypasses money. An economic system that totally de-emphasizes money. In other words, this is a paradigm shift. And it's time for us to step into that paradigm shift and begin to discover this economic system that God himself set up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you so much. We are excited to find out. We want to know about this system that you set up. We want to understand how we can buy without money and without price. We give you praise, Lord. We give you all of the glory. Hallelujah. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God, and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you 
all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Freshdew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.